I think these days in business school and in business, we're seeing the value of inclusivity. And I think the question is why? Why are we putting such a big emphasis on inclusivity? There is sometimes a tendency to think that there's a, a moral obligation to put an emphasis on inclusivity, to make sure that we're giving others uh, an opportunity so we're not just sort of getting the same set of people um, in successful career tracks. To me, inclusivity is simply the opposite of exclusivity. Inclusivity means that you're literally just, you're unlocking the door for people and you're letting them come in, but you're still letting them come into your house with all your stuff. And maybe you're sort of sliding over a little bit at the table and letting them sit there, but you're still surrounding yourself with your things and your ideas. That's not the same as valuing the people that are coming through your door. I was volunteering with some orphans in Nepal and I got there and I found that they were all playing with cars that they made. And these are cars that they had took sticks and they had rubber bands and they cut up old flip flops, everything they found in the garbage and they made these cars. They didn't look anything like cars, of course. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna be the big hero here. I had brought for these kids 18 little matchbox cars. And they took these cars and they kind of looked at them for a couple minutes and then they winged them against a concrete wall where they shattered against the wall. And then they brought me back the pieces and they asked if I could fix the car. And I said, well, no, I can't actually fix that car. It's now completely shattered. And they ended up going back to their stick with their little rubber band and their flip-flop. And it was an interesting moment for me because I realized in that moment that maybe, just maybe, my car wasn't actually better than their car. Maybe just because it cost more and it was more technology went into it, maybe it actually wasn't better than the little car that they created out of trash. I mean, after all, for them, it took a lot of innovation to make that car. Ultimately, it's still imagination. It's not like the car I gave them they were gonna get in and actually drive. It's still all about imagination. And I got the first little inkling that maybe my values, maybe my ideas weren't the right ideas that I had to find a way to impose on other people and especially in other culture. Maybe even among the orphans of Nepal in the middle of a civil war, maybe they had something of value that I wasn't seeing. Maybe what they had was actually more valuable than what I brought. That's what inclusivity is to me. Inclusivity is not just opening the door. Instead, it's valuing, it's seeing what they bring, even when it looks strange, even when it looks different. That's the value of inclusivity. It's gonna come from reaching new demographics and having new ideas from new demographics. Even when those new ideas and those demographics don't seem to make any sense to you. And when we're talking about the business case of inclusivity, we are talking about actually honoring and valuing the new ideas that come out of there. It's actually honoring the innovative process. It's actually looking at what they've brought in that looks so radically different and finding the value in it even when you are holding it up against something that looks so useless. Even when you have a beautiful matchbox car that's gone through decades of innovation to get there versus this little car made of sticks and rubber bands and cut up old flip flops that you found in the trash. Maybe that's something where the value is somewhere beyond where you think the value is. Not because it's more valuable to you, but because we're in a world that's governed by business and governed in increasing value. And if we can increase value to others, it's much, much more valuable than when we can increase value simply to ourselves.